How did the European colonization of native populations near the modern day region of Mexico, Mexico, affect the genetics of the general populace of the present time? Right. So, like we discussed in the previous question, uh, the Spanish colonization of uh, the Americas, Latin America, begins uh, with the arrival of, of, of uh, Christopher Columbus in um, the Caribbean region in 1492 and eventually you know he and his various other compatriots they take over various parts of latin america uh, in 15 1521 you have the fall of tenochtitlan the fall of the aztec triple alliance the aztec empire at the hands of hernan cortes in the 1530s all the way to the 1570s you have the destruction of the inca empire by francesco pizarro and over time what happens is that about 90 percent of the native population is is eliminated through various means, either through violence or by smallpox or other old world diseases or whatever. About 90% of the native population, or maybe more, is killed. Genocide, total genocide. Then what you have is that you've got lots of European origin people who settle in these territories. So it was settler colonization after genocide or during genocide. So, because and then what you have is that you have intermarriage between the two populations, between the native populations who are uh, at the in, in 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 at the lower end of the caste system that was imposed upon them, and and the occupiers, the European occupiers, the Spanish occupiers, who are the privileged and the, and the powerful ones in the, the higher end of the power differential. So, if you look at the Spanish, I mean, if you look at the. Uh, genetics of let's say mexico and other latin american countries today you will find that most people are what we call mestizos which are mixed people mixed race people and if you look at their genetics overall about 50 60 percent of their genetics between 45 to 55 45 to 60 percent of the genetics will be native and the rest so more than half the more than 50 percent of the genetics are native and the rest of it about 40 percent 45 percent or whatever is european now that's not all. There is nuance to it. There are two kinds of ancestries. One is the mitochondrial DNA ancestry. Mitochondrial DNA is passed on from mother to children. So mother to children, it's passed on, but male children cannot pass it on to their descendants. Only females can pass it on to their descendants. So the mother will pass on mitochondrial DNA to both male as well as female offspring, but only the female offspring can pass it on to, to their offspring. That's how it is. So that's why mitochondrial DNA is your matrilineal line of descent. So if you look at the genetics of the people in, the, in Latin America, if you look at their mitochondrial DNA ancestry, about 90% of it is native. If you look at their patrilineal DNA, most of it is European. What does it indicate? It indicates that most of them are descendants of children fathered by Europeans with native women. That is a classic symbol of colonization and foreign occupation, where the foreign occupiers won and the local males were wiped out and the women were enlisted into the business of procreation with the Europeans. That is the deal. Right? So that is how um, the European occupation of Latin America and the devastation of the native populations, how that has contributed the, to the kind of genetics that you have in Latin America today. Clear classic signs of foreign occupation, you see, in the tale that the DNA and, and genetics tells us.